Hey guys, I am about to incorrectly apply an eight year professional grade coating to this car paint. I'm gonna let the coating dry on the paint and then I'm gonna show you guys how to remove it safely. Now guys, before I get into this video, make sure if you are interested in getting started professionally in ceramic coatings, paint correction, and getting customers into that part of your business, go below in the YouTube description box and grab my free ceramic coating quick start. It's a free five part video series that teaches you not only the hands on training, the tools and products, and exactly how to do this, but more importantly, how to actually start cash flowing this part of your business so that you can get customers and start making money from your new hands-on training. The link is in the YouTube description box below the free ceramic coating quick start. So I want to go ahead and take a couple different looks at this car paint. Now it's important to say that while this car paint is washed, decontaminated, clayed, iron X, surface prepped, it is not corrected because for the sake of the video we really don't need to do correction. We're just looking at what it means to remove an improperly applied ceramic coating. So you guys can see obviously the reflections in the background, but what I want you to notice is the ceramic coating itself. So when I zoom back here, you can see the streakiness, this kind of what I would call like a bubbly appearance all up here. Then as you move to the left, you can start to see that streakiness there and the light in my shelves kind of helps reflect it. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit and show you. This was System X's diamond coating, so it's their top shelf coating. It's about an S7 to eight year coating. It was applied, it was left to dry, and it wasn't removed at all. So this is a very extreme scenario. Nobody would ever do this, but my point is if we can remove it like this, then we could remove it in a lesser scenario as well. So you can see once again, there's kind of some drip marks right there, right running down at the bottom of the tape. Now I turned off the overhead lights so that you guys could see just a little bit of a different angle. Once again, as I kind of just move up and down, see all that streakiness there. That's all ceramic coating. And like I said, this is the most extreme example I can think of because I applied the coating and I did not remove it. I just let it dry. And this has got basically an immediate flash time. You don't let it flash really for any time on the paint. So all that streakiness right there, all of that is one big old high spot. And it's really the most extreme high spot you get. I'll use my pen light here to further emphasize kind of this side. When we come down, you guys can see crazy amount of swirls and stuff as well, but most of it's kind of focused up here. Get a little bit of a different angle. You can see kind of where it ends right there. So how are we going to remove this? Well, remember, like I said, this is like the most extreme scenario that could ever be thought of, okay? So this is gonna take a little bit extra measures to remove, but I just wanna show you that it can be removed. Now, you might be thinking, What's the difference between removing something like this and then removing like a retail grade coating? A retail grade coating nine times out of 10 is going to be far easier to remove than something like this. That's why we went ahead and just went for the hardest type of coating to remove so that we could kind of get our bearings about it. I'm using a medium cut foam pad here on my Rupes uh, Dual Action Mini, okay? And then I'm using my Ceramics Polish CSI Polish. I'm gonna hook up all this stuff in the YouTube description box below. Now what I wanna show you is I will prime the pad here. So I'm just gonna rub in the polish onto the face of the foam pad and really make sure it's spread evenly. Then I'm gonna take a little bit more polish and I'm actually going to be using more than I would if I was strictly polishing the paint. So I'm using a bit of an excessive amount. The reason is with this non-diminishing abrasive, what I wanna do is kind of increase literally the number of abrasives that I'm using at any given time. And once again, because it's a non-diminishing abrasive, basically the more I increase the uh, liquid I'm using, the uh, I'm increasing the abrasives apparent in this particular solution. So as I do that, I'm also increasing the amount of just like suspended liquid, which means that things are gonna be able to roll around kind of at a microscope level underneath the pad in that suspended liquid essentially. So I'm gonna use a little bit more here and then I'm gonna take a little bit of distilled water because this is a uh, totally water-based polish. So water actually can even reactivate this polish when it's dried if you're polishing in the sun or something like that. It's part of what I love about this type of polish. Now I'm just really simply gonna spread it around a little bit just so I get a bit of an even spread here. I'm gonna keep my polisher on about speed three. There's no reason for me to go faster than that. And what I wanna emphasize here is I am not digging into the paint here as I am polishing off this ceramic coating. And actually there are certain instances I've found in my own experience when you're polishing something like this 
where you're removing the entirety of a ceramic coating that has not been removed at all, you can actually kind of increase your chances of burning through the clear coat here. And I imagine that being simply because as I'm removing this like really extreme excess amount of coating, it is installing itself into this pad. And you could imagine it kind of ripping through the clear coat at a little bit greater level than just these abrasive, this abrasive polish that I'm using, right? So that's why I kind of say, hey, let's ease up on the pressure anytime we're doing something like this. Now again, if this was just a simple high spot where I had, you know, wiped it down, but I just didn't remove all the excess, it'd be a little bit of a different story. But here I am not going to be putting a bunch of pressure on the paint. I'm just going to be going in a bit of a crosshatch pattern here, maybe a tiny bit of downward pressure, but not much. Speed three, and we're going to go for around 30 to 45 seconds. Now I exaggerated a little bit there in the beginning. I was on the paint for uh, pretty much probably double what I said. I said originally 30 to 45 seconds. I was probably there a minute and a half to a minute 45. But what I can see even with no light but my shelves and my overhead light here is I have fully removed this coating, and once again, remember, the coating was applied, it was not removed, it was dried on there, and then I let it sit for about four minutes. So I didn't let it sit for, you know, 24 hours, which I have actually done before, and it takes longer to remove it than this. But what I wanna show you guys here very simply is that this is a way you can fix your mistake if you're applying a, a professional grade coating. Retail grade coatings are super easy to fix, but professional grade coating like this, you actually can fix it, even with just some simple polishing, if you're in a time frame like this, and like I said, because I actually did kind of the worst case scenario here, you guys are not going to be doing the worst case scenario, and it's gonna be even easier to fix than this. Now, frankly, I don't even need to put any lights on it because you can see, number one, the paint looks really good because it just got polished, but you can see that there are no streaks anywhere, right? Let me come to the side where you used to be able to see them. That bubbly appearance, kind of that high, high spot, we would call it, but this is kind of an extreme high spot. Can't see it anywhere. I'll pull back a little bit further here. And you can see, once again, it just looks really good. The coating's been totally removed. So things really can be that simple when you are applying a ceramic and let's say you mess up, it can be fixed. The reason I show this is because a lot of times as a beginner you can kind of think, oh my gosh, if I screw something up, this is no man's land. This is no going back. I can't I can't go, go back and fix my mistake. And it's really just not true. That's actually why I wanted to show you kind of in this extreme situation what it looks like to fix a mistake because Mistakes can be fixed, and yes, there are situations where you're dealing with really thin clear coat or extenuating circumstances where it might be a little bit more nuanced, but this might give you a lot of confidence as you're moving into ceramic coatings and say, hey, I can mess up and I can still fix my mistake. So guys, if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button so that I know, hey, I can make more content like this because this is actually helping people. And before you leave, make sure to go below in the YouTube description box, like I said in the beginning, grab the free ceramic coating quick start five part video series where we teach you guys not only how to apply ceramic coatings, how to get into paint correction, but also how to start getting customers and cash flowing this part of your business. The link is in the YouTube description box below. And of course, if you guys are interested in the tools and products that I specifically used in this video, go below, those links will be in the same exact place in the YouTube description box. Guys, thank you so much for watching, and as always from Luke here at Wilson Auto Detailing, keep working hard, and I will see you in the next video.